This video is by Mark Kingston from the ARA Institute of Canterbury in Christchurch, New Zealand. Okay, so this video here is on the uh, ARA Institute of Canterbury Year 3 Block Course for Apprentices. It's the Spherical Chimney of Pattern Development. Um, so what I've drawn, you can see it on the screen here. I've got a plan view up the top here. And down on this bottom portion, I've got the front elevation, side elevation, doesn't matter what you call it. And we have to develop the segment off to the side here. So in order to um, develop that segment, we have to put some cutting planes across this um, front elevation. And we're only working between... Uh, or the bulbous part, the spherical part. So this portion down at the bottom here that you can see with the cursor moving around is the transition. It's a dodecagon to a square. So you can see the square in the top portion there. And a dodecagon is 12 sided. So there's 12 segments there. So in order to um, determine how we do the pattern, we need to put some cutting planes across uh, the body there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn them on because I've already drawn them. Uh, so there are my cutting planes and I've numbered them around the outside there. Absolutely crucial you number everything very accurately on this uh, otherwise you'll get really confused as to where your lines are going. So through the I put them at a specific distance apart so turning the cutting distances on, I'm just going to zoom in a bit. Uh, from 0 to 1, 1 to 2, 2 to 3, 3 to 4, 4 to 5, 5 to 6, 6 to 7, and 7 to 8. The distance between all of those points is 50 millimetres. When I've got up the distance to, or gone up the top here, as the curve comes around the outside here, uh, the distance between, say, uh, line 9 and 10, uh, the distance on the curve can start to change quite dramatically. So uh, I've reduced the size, so I'll just do a dim linear here. So this top one up here, uh, so the distance between cutting planes 9 and 10 is 15 millimeters, and the last distance here. I actually didn't measure this deliberately, but it's come out at 5 millimetres. So as the curve comes round at the top, you actually need to put more cutting planes in. When, it's, uh, when they're hitting more perpendicular to the curve on the outside here, you can have a standard distance. So the overall height, as you can see, is 445. Now, um, I've broken the, the, the arc that goes around the outside. It's a fixed line on this side, but I've broken the distances up. Uh, so let's show you the line, um, the curve from 0 to 1. If I do a list on that, uh, it comes up with a length here of 54.67. Um, and that distance changes, as you can imagine. Uh, the curve is actually going to change the distance between the, the, the points. So 0 to 1, as you can see, is 54.67. I've got it in the chart here. So I've written the chart up just to show you what I've done. Look at the distance between 7 and 8. It has a distance of 79.1. So up here, you can see that the curve is really starting to hook around. If I'd left this distance in here at 50 millimeters, um, the distance between 8 and 11 would be quite significant and you wouldn't get too much accuracy. So just to do a list on that one again, you can see where I've got my 79.1 millimetres from and that's the distance from 7 to 8 uh, and that's that curve there. So what we have to do uh, when it comes to laying out the pattern um, what am I going to turn on here? I'm going to turn on the pattern numbering. So up here uh, you can actually see the distance between the 0 and the 1 and the 1 and the 2 is a shorter distance than what I've got here for the 7 and the 8. 
uh, and that actually comes out from uh, we'll put our projection lines in and we'll turn our last projection lines on as well so what we have to do is once we um, determine our points around the outside by our cutting planes wherever the cutting plane hits the circle one I projected vertically up actually that's probably not a good one to do let's do seven so with a cutting plane comes across for seven I project up and it hits the uh, one of the 12 segments one of the dodecagon segments and where that line hits uh, it projects horizontally across so if I come across here uh, we've come up from line 0.7 up to these two outside edges where the, where the arc is or, or where the lines radiating from the center are and I project it across and I've hit line number 7 uh, and that's my points that I'm trying to determine so the distances um, if I go and just expand this and shunt across slightly the distance between um, point zero this first line here I'm going to have to shunt it a bit further across can I get it on the screen no, I'm not the distance between uh, the first line it's not going to show up because I haven't got my cursor small enough to actually do it the distance between 0 and 1 is this distance over here of uh, 54.67 then the distance from line number 1 to line number 2 is on the chart here 51.49 so that's where I've got my points from I've taken all the distances across here uh, from 0 to 1, 1 to 2, 2 to 3, all the way down to 10 to 11 and it gives me a total length down the bottom here of 622.56 millimeters and that's actually what you can see that I've got up the top here 622.56 millimeters so uh, every line that we take from a cutting plane we project up until we hit uh, these two lines here we project them horizontally across and where they hit the perpendiculars which are the spacings between all the lines uh, that's actually where we get our intersection points around the outside just as a matter of interest uh, where's pan I've uh, from three onwards I used sort of an orange line to uh, highlight uh, my projection lines but when I dropped below the three uh, I went and used a, a magenta line because it's quite difficult when you get all these lines up here together they're actually almost sitting on top of each other um, and it's quite hard to determine where they are so I what I did was I projected across with the orange lines and when I had to hook the curve back in uh, you'll see that the spline line which is the white line picks up the magenta lines when it comes back in so it's just my way of trying to determine where those points were um, as a matter of interest the distance come back down here uh, right so if I project the line up from uh, three uh, sorry from the center line so I'm going to project the line up from the center line. This is line three, and that's the projection up from it. If I project the line up from line three, which I actually haven't done, you can see the green line going up there. I'm just going to tell it to go a, a thousand millimeters high. Uh, when I get up the top here, uh, it actually gives the intersection. So that's that magenta line there. So this this point here I should have actually projected a, a, it's the outside distance of the sphere I should have projected a line from this point across uh, because it's the very outside uh, line which is the spline line the white line I don't want to start confusing you but what I'm trying to highlight is that the distance between these two points is very small so what do we got I think we had 0.04 of a millimeter oh, okay so down the bottom here 
uh, delta x down in the bottom left hand corner, the distance between the two lines is 0 0.04. So I just left it. I didn't worry about it because you're not going to be measuring anything that is 0 0.04. When I start talking that to you, you're going to come out swinging. So that's the distance between actually the center line or the radius line for the spherical chin, which goes from this uh, cross here, here. And I put my, because I'd stepped off at 50 mil increments, it didn't quite hit on that line. You could line one up on that line, doesn't matter. Um, as I say, it's so the increment is so small, uh, it's not worth worrying about. So that's what you're going to have to do when you turn up to the course. You will be drawing out your um, segment for your uh, spherical chimney, and that's how we go about it. We draw a, a plan view over a front elevation. That's what the third angle projection is, which is what we do in this country. We put some cutting planes across the uh, spherical portion and we project them up and where they hit the uh, two lines radi radiating for the segment we project all those lines horizontally across we place the distances off this chart here um, you're actually going to have to measure them incrementally around the outside so that you get all those distances all the way around there so that you can actually step them off between your points I'm not going to talk anymore. I've already talked for coming up to 12 minutes, and that's enough. But you need to go over this drawing a few times before you turn up because that's what you're going to have to develop, and you need to be au okay fait with it. Um, you're not going to get that much help with this uh, on the course this time because it's a year three project. So uh, look at this, revise it, get your head around it, watch it two or three times, and it will be of immense help for you on the day. Leave it there. Thank you.